All right, well, we'll call the meeting to order. First up is to approve the agenda. <coughs> Any changes to the agenda this evening? Just the executive session at the end. Executive yeah. session. Add an executive session for legal discussion. Yes. Yes, I do need to add that. Okay. Anything else? And we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be inviting Mary to into that also. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. We will be inviting Mary Floyd into that executive gotcha. session. Yep. We're all okay with that. I approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Open it up to public comment or inquiry. Is there anything that's not on the agenda this evening that anybody wants to bring up? I'm pretty sure that Eric is on the agenda, so. Is there anything uh, <coughs> non agenda related, Eric, you want to bring up? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we will, hearing none, we will move to our um, go to reports, motions, and ordinances. Our appointments are not here. Um, first up was to appoint a new energy committee member. Everybody have the email. So I would entertain a motion to appoint Scott Putney to the Energy Committee. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. And we can move on to the, the warning. Eric, you've had a top or Teresa, I, I believe she's had the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I was yeah, talking to her today and I can't remember if she had talked to you. We can work back and forth on the line. Okay. Yeah. We're and, and I know, did you take the class with her as well? With the, yes. Yeah. So, so the language that we're using here is the language that is the model that the league had, had set forth. Right. Yeah. I know it, it looked like there was they were uh, slightly different than years past, so. Now there was the town officer's report, is that, that was removed from the warning? That just doesn't pertain anymore? It doesn't because, you know, it's really, well, it's a formality. Hmm. Um, and it's kind of an awkward point in the, in, in the warning. Um, really, what's the point of it? Well, what was it in the past? Was it an actual report? It was actually, it was actually like a financial the word in, in the past was um, report of the auditors, which you know uh, the auditors put that that's basically the um, the financial part of it. Right. And then then it was changed to report of, of, the, of the officers. So it's it's more of a form formality. It's not something that has to be done. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, Therese could better explain 16. There's a little bit of a wording change here because um, it reads shall the board is approved up to the summer of 136.943 for the part of the valley ambulance. And that was because they, they, they uh, their fiscal they're, they're, Their year is different than that year. Yeah. Yeah. So the calendar year. Their calendar year were physical year. Right. So yeah. none of the numbers weren't exact to be hard and fast, but it was going to be more of it. Right. And Tracy, she's pretty particular about having, having things mm -hmm. be accurate. She's the other thing, Rick, the selected trustee of public funds for a term of three years. 
Right. And that was in last, also in last, last year. year was so you have to do it. You have to do it every year for three years, no, or you just do it once every three years. There's several. Yeah, there's three trustees. So every year. We oh, oh, it's three trustees. Now, okay. And that's one thing. In your okay. packet, did you have a wording change? Is actually it's my turn that's coming up, and my name is not here. So I mentioned that to her. I thought she. It's was you're in there. You're on the. This is the latest and greatest. Okay. So you are in. Number nine is uh, to elect a trustee of public funds um, for a term of three years to succeed Eric Benson, whose term expired. Right. Oh, I didn't get that. Yeah, I must still have the old version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't yeah, that. Old yeah. yeah. It's been fixed. Okay. His name's on it now. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I'll be, I'll be back before the last meeting in February, the second meeting, which is the last meeting before, I believe, before I, the town meeting actually is, just to talk to you about who's going to talk regarding each of the uh, the money issues, and just you know, so I'm kind of cued in on who, who determines the money to us. So you guys can be thinking about that. I mean, I, I would do it again if everybody's okay with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I can do the the uh, human services uh, material. Yeah, that's what's important to me. Make sure people are aware that there's a committee that actually looks at this yep. because there's always the temptation to increase allocation for each of these. So yeah, so I, I would um, be more than willing to get up and talk about the budget, <clears throat> maybe and or the kind of the reasoning behind the the fund, the established funds that we want to do. I can do that all in one right before right. Article 10. Yeah. Just so that we don't have a lot of confusion on why we're <clears throat> why we're looking for those in this year. It's really not anything other than what we've been. We just want to be able to carry that money from one fiscal year to another by establishing those funds. So. And I think, uh, according to Teresa, she indicated that, that the general fund number includes these right. amounts. Mm -hmm. So people aren't confused that they're that they're adding to that number right. mm -hmm. each of these. Like we had that issue one year a few years ago. Correct. So why don't we um, <clears throat> Well, I think one of the big issues that we had one of those years was we uh, passed the budget, let's say this two three ninety nine eight eighty eight, and then someone comes says, "Well, then why are we looking at uh, eleven, twelve, and thirteen? We've already passed all that money. So why wouldn't it be, or would it be better to have eleven, twelve, and thirteen before ten? Well, for these, it's established in the as capital funds so that they can roll into future years as opposed to, because they're in the budget, they're part of the budget. Because what we would have to have is, if you put any of those first, then you'd have to amend the amount. Um, so someone would have to be there with some sort of calculation device to, you know, if, if the town right. decided to vote in half of them but not the other half, then then before that article would come up, you'd have to amend the number, mm -hmm. um, what that would be. So this is kind of almost a maximum limiting number, not to exceed. Um, I'm and just then wondering, any of these are more like a deduct than that. I'm just wondering if the, someone could say, well, then you've uh, got $140,000 just kicking around with the general fund that you don't know what you're going to do with unless we pass these things? Well, no. Because if these, if, if the add-ons, if 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, if any of those don't pass, then that, that comes out of, out of the, the general fund expenditure. That's a maximum limited number, not to exceed. Okay. Um, 
I just know that people have asked and asked, well, you know, why we we passed the whole number, why are we talking about the rest of it, including the ambulance and the and the, right. uh, the Well, in uh, this case, though, we have to establish it as a fund in order to be able to carry it from one physical year, one to, the physical year to the yeah. other. So that's really the explanation why these have to be broken out. These well, and, 11, and 12, 13. And, if, and you have to put your maximum limiting number 15. forward because uh, we have our other pages that break <coughs> down what the tax rate will be, the implications on that. And if, if we did it the opposite way, then you would have a higher okay, time. Well, that, Someone yeah. would have to be there to compute numbers. You know? Just preparing you for what you might have to say. Yeah. 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 And we'll be, um, we have an appointment <clears throat> later here. Um, there could be a potential non-binding resolution yeah. to go on the other business is kind of where we put the other one last year, right? So, yeah. uh, we'll, I'm stick around there. Okay. Just so I'm familiar with that. Um, the, the appointment last time didn't show up. I'm assuming they're coming tonight. I am assuming so. Um, so there could be a potential for that. But I didn't see, I didn't see any issues with um, the piece that I had. Um, the piece, the warning, you mean? Yeah. But I guess we'd have to make a motion as a, as amended because it has been amended with <coughs> Craig's copy. Is that the only, the only change? It's only one I'm aware of. Um, you're welcome to look at my copy. And no, just want to just make sure yeah. that if you do it as amended, that will. That that as far as I know, that's the only change uh, we've got. The numbers wise, I've got number ten. I've got twenty three nine nine eight 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 two zero zero two five nine four three nine seven two nine four, and then eleven is twenty five hundred dollars. Twelve is one thirty-two seven seven five, and then five thousand, yeah. then five thousand, yeah. and then twenty-four six fifty, yeah. one thirty-five nine forty-three, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. One so, thing you might want to just this is trivial, but someone may ask a question. I believe February fifteenth is a Sunday, two thousand. Said, rather than changing all, changing that date, they're going to accept accepting on the 16th. Right. Mm -hmm. So someone may ask. Okay. Yeah, we'll just let them know that the question comes up. So as far as I, as far as I can tell, there's nothing else that's that's changed other than just adding Eric's name to this. to accept right. as amended. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 The town's portion is the first up before the, um, the employee's portion comes out. Um, nothing has changed from it. It's still the MVP. We're still using MVP for our, our provider. Um, and the HRA is identical to last year. But we're just required every year to, um, to approve, I guess, that HRA and how it functions so that we can we can move forward on it. And um, maybe there wasn't a requirement. I, I wasn't here last meeting, but I thought Teresa said she brought it to you, but it, it's probably something that just, it, it requires a resolution, but it's it's something that we guess we do every year. So the only board approval would be to, to approve me to sign it uh, with no changes to it at all. Okay. So that's what this is. It's really just a technicality on something that we have been doing in the past and they're just continuing to do. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion for Greg to sign on behalf of the town for the HRA plan. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't think in the past, even when we had the Blue Cross Blue Shield one, I don't think we ever did one annually. Yeah, and, and I don't remember that, but it sounds right. And you know, as a manager I have the authority to do that, but when it comes to resolutions, yeah. I have you know, we just I have to give it that authority. Yeah. Okay. 
Nationals Certificate of Highway yep. Mileage. So we, again, something that we do every year. Um, this is our certification that we do truly have roads in this town, and uh, these are the classes of those roads, and nothing yep. has changed. Uh, this does take signatures from, they only have three lines, but I'm sure everybody can sign if you feel like it. Um, but this is, uh, this is how we get our, our state funding for our roads, for maintenance of our roadways. So um, there were no changes. We had last year, we had uh, changed like, I think one tenth of a mile had changed, um, but that's, that's already been done and there were no changes this year at all. So basically same as last year. Uh, this would require a, uh, an approval and signature by at least three of you. I'm going to make a motion that we accept it and sign it and move it on. Second. Okay, all in favor? There's a different sheet here in my packet. That's the half of the harassment policy. Oh, okay. It should be two pages of the harassment policy. I don't think anybody, I didn't get it. I'm I, sorry. No, the first page was talking about the class one, two, and three Thank highways. You. Yeah, that should have gone with this. It was just an explanation of, of what this okay. was. Just okay. information. No, I just got confused because immediately yeah, after it's back, it was actually yeah. the backside of this form here. Yeah, I reprinted that. Did everybody get the rest of it, the harassment policy? And mm -hmm. Just two pages. I got the reprinted version here. Okay. Did any of the members have any further discussion in regards to the third party harassment policy? So this is, I think, the, the third rendering of this. Incorporated all the comments from the previous meeting, so this is the, the final version of it. Um, again, the intent of this document is to protect employees from harassment coming from outside the organization. Um, it allows them the, the ability to step away from a situation where they don't feel comfortable uh, and not be reprimanded for it. Uh, we've, we've had some of those in the past where people are you know, jumping on somebody's case and, and my employees have, and voiced their concerns about you know, what happens if I get if I leave. Do I get in trouble for? Mm -hmm. So this just clears that up, clears that up and, and provides them with a way out. Um, they're put into a situation where they should be. Okay. Do you have a motion to adopt? Yep. So if there are no more comments, if everybody's satisfied with it, if I could take a motion to to adopt it, and I'll need to get everybody's signature for it also. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. Wait and see if that's our 615 appointment. If it's not, we'll just continue on with our last agenda item there before. It's not like anybody's come up the stairs, though.
we'll move over to the, the draft of the capital improvement budget. <clears throat> so I want to uh, kind of preface this by saying it's very, this is a very, very, very early in the process for this budget. Um, so what this is, um, we have had, oh, about three years ago, I want to say, three or four years ago, the, the town approved and created a fund um, that was just called the Capital Improvement Fund. And looking at the language of that fund when it was created, it was a little bit vague. Uh, I think it was kind of meant to, to just cover a lot of different things, just in case kind of thing. Uh, and last year at town meeting, there was some talk, the, the ugly word of, of slush fund was brought up multiple times. So uh, what this is, is, is a very generalized, very early in the process, sort of a map for the expenditures of that fund so that you know, hopefully we can show people that, we're, that money is not just sitting there for a rainy day. It's actually going to be utilized, and there's a, a road map to how that. There's a road map to how that, that money is going to be utilized. So um, I can kind of go over this. What we've done historically is put $50,000 into the fund for the last few years. Um, and what I did was kind of go through, uh, I went through our capital plan that we had put together a few years ago. I don't know if, I'm sure you all remember, there was a, a document put together that kind of outlined uh, some of the projects that the town was going to see that, that they thought were going to be coming up. Things like uh, town manager's office, the town garage, some work to the town hall, water, things like that. So the concept here was to kind of take what I thought was probably the the worst or the, the highest priority facility, which was a town garage, and look at how we could fund that <coughs> through this fund. Uh, as well as, we know we have some infrastructure and needs that are gonna be coming up. The water department or the water system is gonna require a, a significant investment. So, because we are very limited on how many users we have on that, you know, any small or any large purchase of any kind with 300 and something users is a huge impact. So the other half of what I was doing here was to see how much, if any, of that burden I could take off of the users and, and use this fund to pay for the infrastructure, some of the water infrastructure, which again was in the language originally whenever this was created, was to, was to fund a little bit of everything. Uh, so that's kind of what these numbers look like. So what I did was I, I took our balance forward. Um, if you look at the year where there's a, uh, the town garage. So I'm a, I did some research and I'm looking at roughly a half million dollars for a town garage. And that includes everything. That's from the ground up. It's, Can you just, um, the, the uh, physical years didn't print out on the yeah, I didn't sheets. Can you, what was the? Third column. <clears throat> third column is what so, year? So the third, well, right now we're in so the, where the five hundred thousand dollars comes out would be the would be the nineteen twenty year. So nineteen. Yes. That's next year. That's this it's year. Not comes physical year, but nineteen twenty fiscal year. Yes. So next year we would. Next the idea would be that we would borrow the, the budget we're working on now. Okay. And this has no implications to the budget we're working on now because right. it's, it's all capital funds. Right. It's all not taxpayer dollars at this point. I mean, it is, but it's not. Yes. The excess, so it's well, the mm -hmm. using the payment right. of the yeah. using that fifty thousand dollars that's already been appropriated to that fund. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the one that has the the, the five hundred thousand dollars coming out is the, the okay. year we're working on for next year. Okay. Makes more sense. So yeah, I, I sorry, I don't know why that didn't print out like that. So um, so what I did was I took uh, kind of our balance forward, which was uh, basically a. Um, Hundred and there was a, an extra hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars. So what it, I did is I took it. We would put down a down payment towards the garage, and then end up paying, borrowing four hundred thousand dollars for the garage. Mm -hmm. And um, that would, and again, this is the best estimate that I have right now. I haven't gone through a whole process of trying to get estimates and things from people, but um, and then below, if you look, that payback um, is at, at a twenty-year payback. Right. And that payment annually is $29,000. Nope, sorry. 15, oh, initial and then 29 off. annually. Yeah, sorry, I can't see. So it's $15,000 annual. Uh -huh. The first, for that first year, and then $29,000 after that. Because it's only half of a year, it takes us a while to build it, so we're only gonna pay half 
of the payment the first year. So we're looking at roughly $30,000 for the next 19 years on that garage. Um, and then what I did is I took, um, I talked with my, my water supervisor, Tim, and we looked at the first project, probably the highest priority project that we think of anyway, for the water department, which is to loop some lines up uh, Avon and Livery Stable, get rid of some old leaky lines and loop all that around and upsize the lines, um, do new uh, curb stops, which is the, the taps, basically. Mm -hmm. New taps during down Main Street on that that line that's in Main Street now. We can't pay for a replacement of Main Street at this point. That's like a two point two million dollar project, and it's just we're just not ready. For it. So this um, this allows us to put all of the water on the same line and know where the curb stops are at, and eliminate some of the the leaking lines that are dead end lines that are not looped around. So um, overall, that project is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but. What I've done here is I've broken that out so that this fund would pay 57% of that payment, because again, this would be a 30-year loan at 1% that we get through the, the state revolving fund loan. We've, we've already been, now we might go after USDA, but it's gonna be fairly close either way. I'm looking at a 30-year loan at 1% interest. So what that does is, uh, the annual payment on that would be $29,000 and what I've done is taken 57% of that and that would come out of this fund and then the water department would take on the $12,470 payment annual. So that not, you know, so the users are not paying the entire 100% of that, of that loan because that would raise the rates quite a bit. Um, taking on 12470 I think raises the rates roughly 7%, something like that from what we saw last year. Um, so this is just kind of how it shakes out. So again, this was just trying to get something on paper so that we could kind of look at this and go, okay, maybe we don't want to look at a town garage. Maybe we want to look at different water lines. Maybe we want to look at this. I don't know. I just wanted to have some sort of a map that we could start with, some sort of a discussion that we could start with, and then we would look at kind of how we want, how you all want to prioritize things as they, as they start to happen. Um, this is not meant to go to town meeting or even be in the report. It's not going to be there. This right. is very preliminary, very much so. Um, but I just want to kind of get it out there. We, we do have other projects that can be done. We've got other water line projects that could be done. We've got, um, you know, my office. Uh, there's a little bit of money here for, for my office because the, the assumption was if we were to, to do the town garage and all this other stuff, that, that, that the manager's office is not going to, we're just going to stay there. So there's a small investment of roughly ten dollars to $15,000 that would need, need to be made on that building to shore up some electrical issues and we've got some insulation and things like that that needs to be done. Um, and that is also in here. But this is just for discussion. So if you have different ideas of different projects you'd like to see, how you'd like to see them work, that's what this is all about. Just, we start spitting stuff, throw it in here, throw it in, just get, kind of see what spits out the backside of it. Um, but again, I want to kind of keep this in our back pocket so that if this discussion comes up about a slush fund or whatever, why are we funding this? we can at least say that we're, we're working on a, on a plan as to how we're gonna spend this money. And again, I think this is, this is a start. I mean, it, it allows us to still carry over a little bit of money, but it's very little. Um, unfortunately, because it's only $50,000 that, that are gonna be going into this, um, it won't be, I mean, once you use it for these first couple projects, it's gonna be, there won't be much happening with, with it for quite a while unless you increase what that appropriation is. And, and that's what these numbers, um, I'm sure you understand this, but as you see the appropriation go from 35 to 4470, that's because those debt payments are coming out of there. The appropriation is still $50,000, but the debt payments are coming out already. So they're not shown as an appropriation in here. So your idea is, is using it so it's not pulling any additional into the budget with the borrowing. You're not, you're not no. increasing the budget at all. You're using what would have right. been appropriate. It's been historically appropriated at 50,000 per year. Now that may have to go up if down the road, you know, there's something else that wants to be done, yes. But as of the way this looks here, no. There's absolutely no increase in the budget whatsoever. It's just keeping that $50,000, taking those debt payments out of that appropriation, and it, you know, it gets you down to $4,400. So we're spending you know, $46,000 or whatever it is on those two payments annually. So how does this, Get a, how will this be affected by whatever comes down from the state as far as the water situation? Well, that's what this is starting to address. 
but do we know what their priority list is? Do we know that uh, replacing loop lines is, is, you know, high, or is there something else that they want us to do, like the lining of the the They don't necessarily have, I have the <coughs> document and it's 90% complete, which means it's done, besides crossing the yeah. T's. Um, they're not stipulating any projects that have to be done in this oh, okay. specific order. It basically just says, here are the projects. Some of these might be higher priority than others, but here are the projects. There's nothing out there that has to be done yesterday. So they're not saying, you know, by, you know, two years from now, you have to have replaced this and that or the other thing or, you know, Our time limits. Our operate talks about that. But it talks about having this master plan. It doesn't talk about having projects done. Right. Um, it had the master plan had to be in place and there had to be some information about the tank. Okay. They've already done that. Okay. So I mean, right. this isn't going to, as far as I can tell, this isn't going to create a condition where the state's going to come to us and say, okay, this needs to be first, then right. second. Right. That's, that's right. Not, you need $10 million to do this right. thing or that's whatever. Not, yeah. That's not what we're at with this. This right. is really just a roadmap for us. And again, I, after the whole process is over, the biggest project we have, or the most important project, is really redoing the main lines and the service lines down Main Street. But it's a $2 million project, and it's just not feasible to do it right now. We just can't do it. So what we did was we found what we think is a, a suitable alternative to that. Uh, still gets us to, to sort of where we want to be, but it, it's at a much more reasonable cost. Uh, now there's all kinds of other projects out there too. And again, that's where that's where I think this is being preliminary. Once I get you guys that master plan, you can look through it. You know, you have every right to, to prioritize that thing however you want, and that's what we'll do. If you feel that something else has higher priority than, than I do, okay, we'll <coughs> stick it in here and run the numbers and see how it goes. I mean, I guess, you know, my recommendation on what well, one is before we move forward with a facility for the public works, which, you know, we do need, we do need a facility because we're putting Twenty twenty five thousand dollars a year into that shell, and we're getting nothing back. You know, right. so it, you know, it is wasting our money. I mean, the, the money that we're putting into it annually could make a payment on it right now. So, um, however, I think we need to know what the roadmap on the water improvements is mm -hmm. before we go sure. forward with the building. And I think at that time, what we need, to, you know, at least this is just my thoughts. Mm -hmm. no, and I, at that I point, I think what we need to do is kind of open kind of overlap that total cost of the water improvements over however many years it's going to take to do these projects with the consumer rate for water. So, you know, how much can the consumers foot the bill on their own, if that, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and look at neighboring towns, how much their water costs. And I'm on water, I pay for water. Um, <coughs> and then maybe look at whatever's left that we need to finance going towards the capital Fine, you know what I mean? Maybe we'll see that that number might be more 65% water and 35% town or something like that. But, you know, I would just feel before we move forward with that, we sure. have to really know what that water map sure. is before and, and we move forward with that public works bill. Right, which is fine. I, again, I just wanted to get this out here so that we were all yeah. aware of it. No, and so when the slush yeah. fund, no, no doubt. people start throwing slush fund out there, we can, we can have something intelligent yeah. to say against it um that's really was the intent here and yeah we can you know it might be a cool exercise just these days i have everything right here we can just once we get the water master plan we can start throwing numbers in here and just see how things move around because it's all excel spreadsheet so it just moves as you do it you know so mm -hmm. it's interesting that's i that's kind of what i like about this is i don't really know what how it's going to work at the end of the day if it's if it's going to work what project's going to work with what until you put everything in and you see what sort of spits out the other end of it but I mean, we do need to move rather quickly with the public works building too, because we're, again, we're putting, you know, more a year into that building than we could be making a payment on. Yeah, and there, you know. And, and, that, and that building has, you know, very, very limited on what we can do there. Yes, um, yeah. And again, you know, the discussion could be, this, this, this screams discussion, and that's, that's what it was meant to be yeah. by, by everybody here. <laughs> Maybe there's a better location. Maybe there's a way to do a, a town office and a garage, yeah. the same thing. I don't know, I think those are all alternatives that we need to look at. I just, you know, I know that there have been studies and I looked at and I referenced some of those studies that were done. Um, and there was a reference to putting a town garage and, and a, a town office out by the fire department. Um, you know, maybe, I don't know. It, it seems like there's some floodplain issues out there. Plus it's kind of nice to have your town office 
in the village. But, but anyway, that, that's what this is for, though. Just to throw things at it and kind of see how, it, how and if it works itself out. <coughs> and those would definitely be the trade-offs. I mean, if we did move forward with a public works building, then obviously the town office would have to stay sure. put for a period of time. You know, sure. that's whatever, 10, 15 years. And figure out, like you were saying, what do we need to put into the building to get us that right. 10 or 15 years? Because right. we wouldn't be able to fund, you know, both plus water and, you know, even though we all need those. Yeah, but Just, just, just <laughs> the insulation, right. uh, you know, buttoning the thing up will yeah. save quite a bit quite a bit of money on the energy costs. Well, I, I think, yeah. you know, it sounds like the next piece of this that you probably want to hear from me is, is when I get the master plan back, I will quantify what the cost of each one of those projects is as far as a 30-year payment so that we can look at that and throw those numbers into here and just kind of see where it comes, what comes from it. Um, I would tell you the total of all the projects is almost four and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's, and I don't believe that includes the tank. That's all, just... All of the water projects, not... Not including a new tank. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, there's some money there. Yeah, the big one again is Main Street. That's the big ticket item because it's, it's, it just, it's just, it's a nightmare logistically to do. And it's main line and it's a lot of stuff, so. Uh, but it's also our worst line. It's the one that we're repairing all the time. And it's, like I said, there's very little information on what's underneath the ground there. We just don't know, so. Uh, but yeah, once I get the master plan back, I actually, I'll take all those numbers and we'll just, I'll just run them and see what they look like on a 1% interest rate for 30 years. And we can start throwing things in here and just kind of see where it goes. I do think it would be nice, you know, not, maybe not to put it in the report, this information, but if somehow maybe we can have a, a sketch of it to have as a handout maybe um, on town meeting day, just to show that, I mean, these, a sketch you of might, uh, of what we're looking at right now with the capital improvement plan. And, and we know that it, you know this is a living document that's gonna change and this is the very entry level, but at least it shows that we are working on something here. It's not just that quote unquote slush fund. Um, and, and you know, it might it might inspire some debate amongst the town, you know, when they sure. you know some yeah, members see that they well, might, why are we doing might, this before that? Maybe yeah, we should have this first. This is an actual that's model. why I didn't put it in the town yeah. and get get scared by it. Yes. But you know, an informal handout to yeah, we could do put on a table, sure. I think, um, sure. might inspire some conversation for later meetings. Sure. To, um, but I, you know, I think we're in a position with the water, at least from what I've seen in the report, is that it's there's nothing that's that's an absolute requirement at this point, which allows you all to prioritize these projects, mm -hmm. and the town as a whole to prioritize these projects. So then we can we can put them in whatever order we feel, really, mm -hmm. and just see how they. To work out. Okay. Yeah, we can put something together and just hand it out. No, so I think it's good that we're that we're you know finally talking about you know like you said before the the plan was put into place kind of more as a placeholder um, right. that we knew that we needed to do something but we didn't really have a document of what the prioritization of right. was of that other than it just listed some random you know we could use it for right. um, facilities or water or sewer infrastructure. I think it even mentioned the, I think the transfer station was mentioned. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff that things. was mentioned for yeah. it, but yeah. it's better to be able to drill into that and see right. this is what, because again, if something comes on the radar here and, <clears throat> and the taxpayers see that in whatever, 2021, or, you know, we're looking at a proposed building or something, it will inspire some conversation. Sure. I think that's good. Yeah. And again, it's just a roadmap. Something else large could happen. We could have another Irene or whatever, and that, that money's still there. I'm just saying that that, that money can be reallocated and still right. be used. So I think it's important for people to understand that too. That this is not an absolute set in stone map as to how we're going to get there. So anyway, just some some food for thought. Yeah. And I'll job. come back with some numbers for the water projects when we get them. Okay. We'll go from there. Okay. Is that in the home stretch, Greg? Right? The the master plan? It is. We've had final comments sent back to the state. Um, I sent them back probably three weeks ago. So we've got to be close. The only thing I think they're going to make us do is our, where we sample our water every day for chlorine. Yeah. They're not the right spots just, just because there's really nowhere else to do it. So they're going to make us do these outside little doghouse 
kind of things with frost free hydrants probably so that we're going to have to test there because we're required to test the first um, customer and what we're doing it is not it's not right so that may be if there's anything that comes out that's kind of a requirement i think that'll be it but those are, are fairly inexpensive to do it's just a yard hydrant frost free yard hydrant with a little insulated house kind of thing over the top of it Any other discussion in regards to the capital improvement? I was just curious, I didn't understand. Are they adding to it every year? Yeah, well, we we can add to it every year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Y
does need to be accepted or considered as opposed to having representation? You no, know, Eric, I mean, for, if, for other business, people can bring up anything. Right, yeah. I mean, they could bring it up at town meeting if they wanted to, right? If right. someone stood up, right? Not that's inviting the vote. That's what they were wanted to do, was put that resolution. Well, they, she wanted it, she wanted it on, the, on the warning. On the warning. And I don't, last year we didn't do it on no. the warning. No, we didn't. We didn't. did it on the no. business. No, I think we'd leave it. I mean, they can we just leave well, it. Well, again, I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, wouldn't it have to? It have to be a. It have to be a tax citizen in the Bethel to stand up and ask. Well, I guess it's other business, right? Yeah, it could be well, recognized. No, it would have to be someone from well, Bethel. You know, that if one. someone wishes to speak, who's <clears throat> not a resident, technically right. the moderator has to ask the, the body yeah. if they yeah. uh, to give permission to do that. Right. Yeah. And if somebody objects, then ask the two thirds vote to approve to allow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, thinking that they could potentially do that if everyone agreed to hear it. I mean, I guess. I mean, what's the? I think that's the route to go. I think just Wait, bring it up into as a new business, other business, and ask to be recognized. Is she a, a Bethel resident? I guess not. Not sure. No. I don't know. Yeah. So whatever the case may be. Yeah, she's on the backside of Christian. So she's oh, okay. So, yeah. so she could bring so it she up. So I guess at this point we'll just leave it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Leave it be, and and you know if she chooses to bring that forward on town meeting day, then then we yeah. take up a non binding vote. Control over. Do you want it on the warning? Right. If you said no, then she could potentially get a uh, signature. Right. Um, but okay. Yeah. But the warning's basically closed at this point. Right. Yeah. So do we want to tell her, Greg, that? Um, well, if the board approves that, that we would, um, as of right now, we're not we're not putting it on the warning itself. Yeah. She's more than welcome to bring it forward under other business on on the day of. We can do that. That sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. 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 Yep. Works fine. Works for me. Is everybody okay with that, board? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Is there any literature about the water abatement? I, no, no. I, I got a little bit of history on it, but okay. Uh, right. okay. okay. Just yeah. want to make sure it didn't miss something. So, uh, so I guess we'll just give her opportunity to come as well. Uh, Neil is here, so we'll move forward with our 6:45 appointment. Um, Neil's going to give us a little update on some of the health officer. Higher level issues. Um, um, you will have to excuse me. I, I have had no hearing for the last three weeks. So okay. I'm not going to sit back and try to pretend I understand what you're saying when I don't. <laughs> don't mind. It's coming back and I will be fine, but for the time being, it's very difficult for me to understand what you're saying. But it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for coming. Uh, so far. So I think we had um, um, we have the two open cases that we had talked right. about previously. That's what I wanted to address first. The Louisville Road one as well I have as no, the no more to say to, uh, about the thing over by the bridge. That's been dormant. I don't know whether you've heard anything. I don't have heard anything. Nobody's called me. Nobody's talked to me. Nothing whatsoever. So, so um, that one just stays as as it is. I mean, it, yeah. It, it, I mean, it even. I think it even sounded as though back then that there wasn't a lot that you could do, simply because it wasn't a health issue, right? Because it was animals, and not necessarily people living in the house. Have we had any further complaints in regards to that residence? No. No, I need to investigate and see if she's even there anymore. I, I haven't been out there since the bridge was completed. There's, there's a car talking about church in and out right out here. Oh, they were talking about the No, we're talking about here by the bridge, right? I'm sorry. Which one are you, which one are you talking about, Neil? Were you talking about the one right over here out yes. the bridge? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this I, one right here. Well, I think bridge. I was thinking the other bridge. Yeah. The other okay. No, I no. haven't, but I haven't heard anything about this one either. I haven't heard anything. You don't, you've not heard a word? I have not. Nor have I, and uh, there were people saying they were going to buy it, and uh, those were all just rumors, I guess. 
And so it does. So the board as a whole feel. So have have we? Have you been down? You've been down there. I go down, down yeah. there all the time. Right. So is there is there conditions on the outside? Trash and we've heard yeah. rats. Half and, it's covered with snow. Half yeah. it's not. Right. Um, so right now it's probably not not as big an issue as when it gets warm. Spring. When it gets hot. Yeah. Okay. But th does it the question the underlying question does it present a health hazard? And my answer to that is no. It's a mess. It looks awful. I'm sure there are rats in there. So is that not a health hazard? I don't know, is it? Yeah. Well, you, you you one, I, I mean, Thank when you. you measure things like that, you have to think of it in terms of how, how many people does it affect? Does it affect people? Or does it, what, what does a lonely little rat mean that came out of the river and is gonna go back in? I mean, I don't want him in my house, um, but. It, is, it, is it a health hazard? And by definition, according to my definition, by the state, it's not. It annoys somebody, but, so that, that's, in my book at least, dormant. Yep. Anybody else have any take on that piece of property? I mean, I, I, I would agree with Neil that at this point that you know, unless something changes on that property, that it just stays the way it is, and um, unless well, we field other complaints, or you as a board, if you want me to do something different, then nothing. Right now, let me know because I my my real job is to please the state because that's who I perform for. But you guys pay me so. I mean, but if you want me to do something, I will. I would say with the bridge, the one off the, the Church Street Bridge here, that we just leave that, we'll you know, unless the, the conditions change. Um, either we notice the conditions change or we have a, another complaint. So it might be something, Neil, that maybe once the snow thaws in April or May, maybe just take another trip down there and see if anything changed. But I would just leave that one alone. What do you think, Greg? But I would encourage any of you to contact me if there's something that you see, or don't 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 sit and. Uh, well, some folks were saying that they were they were going down there and using drugs in the in the house. That was that, in the summer. That was in the summer. Yeah. So we haven't heard about any of that. that there's been none of that. No so. evidence of that. Yeah. That and that was as, as nearly as I can tell the people who quote unquote owner. Own it, yeah. And there's nothing you can do about that. That would be more law enforcement and health officer than right. whoever's Okay. What about the um, what about the property up on Lilliesville Road? Well that's interesting. I've had several conversations uh, with people at the state about that and I've tried to give them as much information as I have and uh, I, I have to share with you my own personal opinion. I think you're wasting your time. You're wasting my time. Um, the lady that lives there, you should, nobody lives there. The lady that has the lease there, unwritten lease, um, and I think she's discussed this with you, is prepared to bring litigation against the town for harassment. Has she told you that? No. And when I think about it, uh, and you think about it in this vein, if you would, for just a moment. She has a lease there, and nobody can dispute the legality of the lease. Although it's not a written lease, she had a lease, and uh, it had no term, so it's not expired. She still got a lease. Um, and I'm no exception. If I lived there, I'd be complaining about it too. But what her situation is at the current time is she lives with her daughter in Stockbridge. She has a son who has uh, disabilities and she has a trailer over there so she goes there, takes her son, 
has heat in the trailer and whatever his disabilities are, he can stay in the trailer while she does whatever she needs to do for her chickens and her dogs who are living in the dwelling and the garage. Okay? Um, up to now, what do you see wrong with that? Well, nothing. I think the only concern that we had, well, or what the adjacent property owner had was the the trash that was piling up roof high and and the opportunity that environment could well, obviously there's probably environment there now right could you know could be moving from one property to the other I think that was the big concern at that point if unless I took that wrong but I haven't seen any have you seen any I have no property I haven't seen any that a noticeable amount of new trash. <clears throat> right. Of course, it's winter, and you know, winter that's, time that's everything exactly covers right. it too. Yeah. Um, have we have we had any further complaints from the adjacent property owner that in, the, in regards to that? I mean, it, it, it it's a frustrating one because it's a very frustrating because the the owner, the property owner, doesn't seem to want, be wanting to right. do anything. And, and so I think on about all it. kinds Where of where do we set? regarding the property owner and, and his part in dealing with this situation. What what would you like me to do with him? There's not much we can do with him. I mean, he's... I, I'm not talking to him. I talked with his sister. Right. And um, I told her the first thing they should do is issue an eviction. Well, they didn't know how to fill out the eviction right. thing, so I filled it out for them, helped them fill it out, okay. and they filed it with the court. I believe they filed, that's what I told them to do, file it with the court. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, you may have to get an attorney. Um, and he won't have any part of that because he doesn't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to, I mean, I have run right units, in order for me to perfect an eviction, I can't do it by myself. I need an attorney. And uh, Well, I mean, it just sounds like there's, you know, the, there's the property owner that, doesn't want the tenant there any longer and then there's some of the health issues but the owner is not willing to go through the steps to do a proper eviction or get rid of the person so but then there's the adjacent property owner that has concerns for the condition of the property and potential cross-contamination of rodents you know do we get involved if we get if it goes to the point of non-payment of taxes and comes up for a tax sale and nobody I'm wants sorry, to buy I'm it. Not all you're I'm wondering if the town becomes involved because the issue here at, at one time was that taxes aren't getting paid. Well, the taxes are paid in full. They are now. Yes. Not only are the taxes paid in full, but then the taxes were abbreviated and there's a extension of non, I, I don't know, there's a, what, a year of relief on there or something? From what I understand? That, yeah, he I came. He did. He came. He came in, and, and so uh, you were so, paid to the attack. As far as as far as the town is considered, I mean, really, as far as the count, town is considered, on one end or another, you know, their their account is current. So there's there's nothing there's nothing on that end. I mean, at this point, the only reason why we have been called and yourself is really mostly because of the Jason property owner has has filed the complaints. You know, the owner technically didn't file the complaint, right? I mean, he mentioned it at a, at a hearing that it was an inconvenience and, you know, he wished that there was some things changed, but it was the, it was the uh, adjacent property owner that has been the one that has filed the complaints, you know. That's right. Either but, verbal or, but you know. Isn't it, isn't it more aesthetic? <clears throat> yeah, I don't think there's other than, I mean, I know the construction workers and stuff had comments on, you know, the smell and things like that, but when, when I read my 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 role, I'm I'm supposed to work to help mitigate public health hazards. So what's a public health hazard? Something that has the potential to harm the public, physical, right. not their view. Right, and I think the only from what I gathered to this whole this incident here is 
is the the complaint was the potential of the not necessarily the you know if someone was living there or not or the animals it was the the amount of trash that was left on the property that was piled roof high that obviously is going to attract did you ever see that is going to attract um I didn't need animals. She had some in the backyard for a while, but I'm not it was sure it's still to that extent. Yeah. Again, I haven't been out there. But it wasn't like that that high um, during the bridge construction. Well, I don't want to sound contrary, but quite honestly, most of the times I've heard any comments about that, they've been very much embellished. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, on this one, is there's been complaints, but there's no, there's never been a formal complaint. Let's put it that way. I mean, there hasn't been a, a written complaint from somebody filed. It's been, you know, a call and a complaint type thing to the town office. It hasn't been a, a formal complaint. So, I mean, I would think at this time that unless something formally is filed with the town that, you know, there's nothing else we can do there. I think we're just wasting your time and... Well, in theory, the, the landlord can request an inspection the landlord or the tenant can request inspections, which mean you you go in and do an inspection of the property. But he hasn't, you know, he hasn't asked for an inspection. He hasn't asked for anything. But the owners have. I, I'm not going to go in there. To be very honest, the building is locked from the outside with uh, shackles and padlocks to keep the dogs from coming out. Now I'm a little dumb, but I'm not dumb enough to go in there. <laughs> Are the dogs let out at all? Excuse me? Are the dogs let out at all? They are. Yeah. She comes are. out she comes out a couple times a day, I believe, and lets the dogs okay, out. Okay, so I can say then you start getting <clears throat> that they need Yeah, no, she lets them out to run around for twenty minutes. Yeah, we brought that up before and it seemed like the conditions for the no. the animals were at a satisfactory level that wouldn't mm -hmm. qualify as abuse, I guess. Oh no, they're not abused at all. They uh, help the help the um <clears throat> what's that? Um, Humane Society has been there. And, yeah. um, I haven't been real recently, but the, when the chickens were out in the yard, they looked every bit as healthy as my chickens do. I mean, I think that I think this one is just another case that, as of right now, I mean, I don't think the town has enough to really push, and right. nor do we want to bring upon any type of lit potential litigation for right. harassment. But it might be something that you know, in the spring or early summer that we take a swing by and see if any of the site conditions have changed at all, you know? Well, I, I, I think I left you with a thought when I left last time, and, and um, I, I, I will again, because I've pursued this a little bit, but just in conversation with people at the health department. They see uh, the biggest threat there is pollution of the river. That building sits practically on the river, and any debris uh, with spring rains and runoffs and animal feces and all the rest mm -hmm. is likely to contaminate the, the river. So what are you thinking there? Is that something that- Call water resources. Is that something in the springtime that you get permission when, from when the, the owner to go out and look at? Resources. Look at that and then do a report sent to the state. Is that I, I don't know any other way to do it, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm not sure that's a satisfactory way, but it is a way. Um, but when you look at the underlying causes of the, the complaints, and they're true, what they're really all about, uh, th this is really a dispute over property. Oh, I, I mean, I, my opinion is until there's a formal complaint filed on that property by somebody, I mean, nobody's formally filed any complaint there, other well, than there's been some calls you're and, right. you know, the gentleman that owns the property kind of brought it up a little bit at a hearing, but nobody's formally filed a complaint. I think we ought to just leave it alone and, mm -hmm. until someone hits. We don't hits. really have any, we, we, we don't can't really have any teeth at we this point. No way, uh, I've got no way to go. So. I think we should just better use your resources on ones that we do have a formal complaint that you know we can use your time wisely and not have you out on fishing expeditions and you know, all the things. That certainly 
it, it's the board appeals thing. to me as the easy way out for the moment, but I think it's the most rational as well. So it's the board. It's the board she's kind of adopted me, which is kind of scary. Um, she don't like you at all. Story of my life. I mean, I, she's got big I shoulders. Job, but uh, you know, she's kind of put me in a trying to put me in a me versus you thing. And just be careful. She'll lock you up in the building and only let you out once a day to feed you. <laughs> so what was the? Um, so let's put those two to bed. I mean. Everybody agree on that? And then we have the, I don't have the exact, I didn't bring the info with me. We had the, um, we have had a complaint that's come forward, um, and you probably know who it is, but um, there's a complaint on the 27 Sergeant's Way, a rental yeah. complaint in, um, between a that's tenant sure and an owner sure. in regards to some Conditions uh, of living there. Status on right. that. that came to me from the state, actually. Right. It seems like it's kind of a. They I, I actually had a conversation with the lady about two weeks ago, and I had asked her to. I was driving at the time, so I was able to talk with her for 20 or 30 minutes, but I asked her to call me back and leave a message with all of her information. Um, so I had it, and she never called me back. So I didn't get her information, but. She did follow it up with a, an email. Was that what she followed up or called? She email called us. Well, to the town. The the, the, yeah, the, the tenant called the state. Oh, the state. Yeah. That's why the state health. contacted me. Yeah. And state probably you as well. Saying that there is a request for an inspection and that by state statute, the health officer is required to conduct an inspection. And there's an expectation that there will be an inspection conducted sooner rather than later from the state. That's what my email says. Have you heard anything recently on it? Yeah, on the 11th of this, so three days ago. What are you, well, you can tell me. What you I, yeah, sure. I, so from this date, it says that she got a call from this lady. Um, and they had originally re reached out in October, but haven't had any success. Um, still concerns about violations of the rental housing health code in her unit. Um, that Neil had not come by to conduct an investigation and inspect her apartment. Um, she says her landlord has not addressed any of the concerns or told her he is waiting to, waiting on the report from the health officer. I've attached a summary of the state law concerning rental housing inspections, including the requirement for the health officer to conduct an investigation and issue an inspection report when requested by a tenant or landlord. And then it gives me a link to, to the state statute that, and then there's also a template of the, uh, the state inspection form. So, um, Title 18 of the Vermont statutes talks about um, that if there's a complaint that the health officer must, says, if landlord or tenant requests an inspection or if the town health officer receives information about a potential health hazard, the town health officer must conduct an investigation. Chapter, uh, Title 18. Um, the investigation, when investigating, the town health officer must issue a written inspection report that describes any violations of the rental housing health code, specifies what action is required to correct the violation, establishes a timeline, provides notice to the landlord and tenants that the unit affected by the violations may not be rented or a new tenant until the violations are corrected, and provides notice to tenants that the landlord must have access to the unit to make the corrections. So, and then it provides um, a template. So they actually have a, a state inspection form that she sent me that I could forward out to you. It's like, um, it's like 12 pages. Yeah, and I think the original email, I thought it had you included on it, but maybe it did. This lady works for the health department, incidentally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she ought to know better than to be sending this stuff to you. She wants the health officer to respond. She probably ought to communicate. Well, these are different people. The, the these are different people. So the pe person from the health department is somebody who's being notified by the tenant of the place. Right. Not the same person. They're different oh. people. Or we, are we, you and I are just looking the, for my The tenant name. and the person who's emailed me have different names. Well, well, let me tell you where I am on that, and not very far. Um, when it first surfaced, I had a call uh, from this person, and they told me about a lot of things that they felt were wrong with the apartment. 
uh, they, with the mobile home. And my feeling uh, was that probably we're just dealing with an old mobile home. And the only things of real specific nature that pertained to me as I saw it was the um, absence of some, some detectors, the smoke and, and uh, uh, detectors in the property. Um, I can't put my hands on it right at the moment, but I will. Um, the landlord was going on a cruise, this was on a Thursday, he was going on a cruise on a Friday, a Saturday morning early. And I said, well, of this list of things, don't leave that property until you replace the detectives. And he called me Friday night, in the middle of the night, and said, uh, the detectives are in place and I don't have time to do the rest of it. I'll get back to it when I get back from the cruise. He called me when he got back from the cruise and said that he had gone down there and um, the th some of the things she, she, she or he or them uh, were complaining about was molds uh, and like lots of old mobile homes, when they start to st structurally they start to come apart, and those drafts and those kind of things, and which again, I, these aren't health issues. These are things that the landlord and the tenant should get their little heads together and fix. And so the, when I left it with the landlord, he was going to, as time permitted, get to it and do these. Little things do you I, have the rental housing health code? the same list, I guess, that you have. Right? Do, you have, I'm sure you have the rental housing health code, well, right? Would you mind sharing that with me? You don't have it? No. Okay. So that, I think, is the beginning of it. So what the state is basically saying is that you're required, or the health officer is required, to do an inspection in a timely manner, utilizing the rental housing health code as um, a kind of a guide as to what constitutes and what does not constitute a health hazard. And that that needs to be submitted to, uh, I'm not sure the state, not us probably, but the state, so that there is a, I guess so the landlord is then required to, to do whatever. Um, that's the way I understand it. Now I'm kind of in your realm now. Yeah, that's, that's technically how it should work. And it sounds as though there has been some issue with them not actually getting, because you're handling this secondarily through the, the homeowner or the property owner and not directly through the state, I guess. So that's why I think they want to see an actual inspection report done. So then they have something, I guess, that they can utilize to, to try to get the, the owner to address the issues. That's what the email said. Is I, what I do when I get a complaint is I take out the form. I mean, you don't need to know how I, well, I'll be happy to tell you. Um, fill out the, the, the details at the top of who the landlords are, the location, the time, the date, all that sort of stuff and write down this, the complaints that they have. And then I talk to the landlord and hopefully I'm able to mitigate the problem before it gets to this, this person. Well, no, I won't go there. Um, and that, that's generally how it gets left. And I don't complete the form until I know that it's been resolved. And that's generally either a call, it's generally a call from the landlord that says, I went down to Susie's apartment and I did da 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 and I've done all I'm supposed to do. If she wants to see my form, she's, I'd be more than happy to share it with her. Uh, I, I am not required to file it with the state. Well, I'm just telling you what the state statute tells me and what they've told me. So the state is basically, again, I can send you this. I think it was sent to you anyway, but it basically says that, that Section 18 of the, well. Well, I don't want to get up in blah, 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 blah. with this person, so if you. Yeah, so it, it sounds as though that, what, what well. she's been hearing is that the, the landowner is refusing to complete all the improvements because he's waiting for a report from you. So it sounds as though you need to get your hands on and whether I need to help you find it or whatever, that, that rental housing code. Because it says in here also in this, this section of the statute that um, the if the where is it <clears throat> the investigation should cover the entire rental housing health code, not just the subject of the complaint. 
So I guess the intent is you go in with the code and you look through everything and make sure not just the one thing that they're talking about, whether it be smoke detectors or whatever, but you're looking at it holistically. So if we need to help you, if I need to help you get your hands on that rental housing health code, which sounds like that's what you're required to reference when you're doing these inspections. We can do that. I, I, I've not seen that, so I don't want to speak to it, but right. I know the conversation that I had with them was just a list of the things that they wanted the landlord to take care of. Right. And right. which he committed to me that he would do. And if he hasn't done them, I'm more than happy to get on his case. And he knows now that I have a fine of a of a hundred bucks a day. And I, yeah. I can't think of anything that would uh, motivate him much more than that. But, but I would imagine that te that legally, in order to um, in order in order to find somebody based off a of violation, it's it's got to be documented. So you would have an inspection report. You'd still be required to have that inspection report to reference that report to reference in order to violate somebody hundred dollars per day. So I think we still need to get. Again, I have the template for the report itself. So I think what's the, the issue right now is <clears throat> just kind of looking through it is. <clears throat> so you have the, the the owner of the residence who's who's not responding to uh, to doing the the work, and then you have the tenant that's affected that has is being very um, loud vocally and is now mm -hmm. pushing the state's button every day, <clears throat> and just kind of just looking through this. I mean, at this point, to cover us as the town. Right. I mean, what it sounds like what we ought to do is going go in even if you have had done one, maybe go on and do an up-to-date um, inspection report mm -hmm. and then send that. It says here that the inspection, after the inspection is concluded, that the town health officer must provide a copy of the inspection report to the landlord and any affected, affected tenants. It doesn't say the state. So I would, I would make a recommendation of make an appointment here in the next week. Be more than happy to go well, out there, do, do your, um, do a current inspection on that, and then give the owner a copy, the tenant a copy, and just and then just step away from that. <clears throat> if the state happens to call you for something, then you could, you know, you could give them a copy of it or something. She asked me, you know, and I said I'll call the landlord, and if it doesn't happen, get back to me. And she apparently chose not to get back to me. Because so, it seems like you know conditions change. I mean, you could have been there six months ago, and things change in six months too, you know? Yes, could be more things, could be less things. Yeah. So I would, I, I, how, yeah. how soon can you get out there to do, uh, I mean, obviously you gotta talk with the tenant and things like that, but do you think that if we if we said, um, our next meeting's on the 28th, right? Mm -hmm. So if we said on the 28th to come back and just kind of update us on Sure. That piece could could you get your pieces done be, before the twenty twenty eight? I have reason to communicate with that particular landlord on an almost weekly basis, and some of you know what I'm talking about, and you know why. And it's just the way it is. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to to have you um, get an appointment to go and do do an updated inspection. Not at all. Give the parties a copy and come to us and let us know that it's all done by the twenty eighth. Okay. Does that sound good, Greg? Yeah, and I actually found that health code if you want me to. Do you, you do email and stuff, don't you? Mm. Do you? Or I can print it off for it. The health code? Oh, I, yeah. I found that rental health code. I can either make a copy and leave it at my office or I can email it to you. Whatever you Why don't want. you do that? Which one? The health code? Email it? E email it to you? Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Okay. So, and, so, and the form, the, the inspection form has just been updated in June, so. There's a more recent, maybe a more recent. Um, no, that's that's the form that's been in existence for. Okay, just long down long the long bottom long. it says revised yeah. six eighteen. So yeah, I didn't know the they, they made any other changes. On a regular basis. Yeah. Okay. And there's all uh, eight thousand questions in here. It that is. Don't change. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll do that. Um, and if you need any information for the tenant or the landowner. If you need it, just, Greg's got the information. Well, you're going to send me the co a copy of your that email, which yeah, you should have gotten it, but I'll just forward the whole thing to you. I'll send it. I didn't bring it with me tonight. It was on the 11th, I believe, but I'll just send it over to you. Okay, put it back back. Okay. No, it was just emailed. Yeah, I printed it out, but I don't know if I put it in here. But 
Well, that's the only thing I've done wrong in seven years. I'm pretty good. So I would just say that that will that'll get the state off our back, and at that point, you know, they can fight it out. It, 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 you can there. have this done any way you want to. I, I remember when I first was on the select board. Um, we had a lady that used to come to every select board meeting and provide each of us with a document um, of what she'd been doing. And quite, quite honestly, it was a, from my point of view, it was a waste of time because it never had any conclusion. Uh, I mean, you don't go to the uh, road agent and ask them to give you a day-by-day -day description of where he went and what he did. No, I just, I mean, again, I just think, you know, when it comes to the, you know, just the high level issues that we have, you know, so kind of like the ones we talked about. That's half complete. So, so what, <clears throat> I, what I decided to do when we pack, talk last, when the things are concluded, uh, you'll have, there'll be a copy. There, sh there should be a copy in the office anyway, uh, in your office. There's one in my office, but you don't have access to that. But you really don't have access to your own file in the town office because it's full of junk that goes back to 46. Um, there's a lot of crap that somebody just should toss away. I don't, I don't, I don't have liberty to do that. But okay. If you want me to, I will. Then we have anything further under um, the appointment for tonight? I think we just had that that. More I've had on dinner, board. so if you guys no. just want to... You're good? That's I'm good. I, just, I need your email address. So you'll follow, you'll follow up with Neil, give him that... Yeah, I'm going to send it right now. I need email. to get your email before you leave. I can't mm -hmm. find it. I need your email address before you go. So I'll just go ahead and... Yeah, I'll forward it on to Okay. So we'll have it. And then we'll, we'll schedule up an appointment for the 28th. Come back in, just brief us on... Yes, I did the inspection. The two parties have a copy of it. And I think I think we'll be good. Hopefully, nothing else big comes between now. <laughs> there are there are a bunch more floating around that you're not aware of, and I, unless you want to be, um, I'll leave that until. We... Yeah, I mean, I I don't think I really See, don't I'm think the board to... needs to know any of them unless they become, you know, a problem. You know that I'm that you need help these with. Things come up from weird sources. And uh, often as not, there are landlord-tenant disputes about rent. And I'm not paying my rent this month until you fix something. And mm -hmm. they, they resolve it themselves. And I do have one that I just got this week that I find quite interesting. And I'd be happy to share with you when I was Seek your wisdom on how to resolve this. Um, this is a very serious situation. And it's quite lengthy, as you can see, and includes copies of deeds and a lot of other stuff that I don't really need. But the essence of the complaint is that the neighbor has a dog who sometimes goes across the street and defecates on this person's lawn <laughs> and I saw this on TV. Is this the same person? This is the a runner? This cops. is a very unhealthy <laughs> no, process. No, a very boy. unhealthy situation in her in her uh, view and that um, the dog um, the dog will urinate on the car tires now that's new um, I've never heard of that one before the dog is being allowed to lift his leg on a antique post and this all surfaced back a while ago when we had that warm spell and the snow melted and the, so someone else is coming on to this owner's land and doing that? Uh, yes. Dark. So why would that be your issue? I have that question I mean, too. at this point, I would think that would be a this, issue, issue a no trespassing order against that person or dog. 
This and if they violate that, then they'll have to. They're running down the rabbit hole. I've already gone I mean, through that's this. Not health, that's not a health. That's not a health. This person also brought a complaint to me. Ordinance on leasing and renting dogs. Yeah, yeah. 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 laws are on there. Because you get sick. Neil, Neil, really, what it is is it's a property dispute. Stay away from it. That's what I would recommend. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm, not, there's nothing there for us. I'm not yeah. going to respond because she's had she's complained about a number of things. The last one was she was walking on South Main Street and she could smell cat urine, and I was like, that was pretty good. And she found that somebody had dumped their cat's box within six feet of the sidewalk. Yes. Well, am I supposed to go clean up? Please? No, I don't think so. Do we find somebody else to do that? Yeah, I would just. I just ignore them. Yeah, or or if they or if they call you again, just have to tell them. The problem is, is that this particular this person calls all hours of the day and night and goes on and on and on about things that I have absolutely no interest in. <laughs> well, it sounds like a, sounds on, like you might have to look so yourself for some restraining order. You what? Could I have your home phone? Sure. Yeah. Because I'm going to direct those calls to your home. <laughs> hey, I'm pretty blunt. Quick to the point. I'm, oh, yeah. So I just, you know, you know, you know the situation. You can't be any more blunt than I am. That's a dog. I sent you that uh, that report, the new template, and that um, code. So that got sent to you just now. Should have it. You should have an email at home waiting for you with the rental code on it. Oh. The rental code and the, the, the form, the inspection form. All right. so check your email when you get home or tomorrow. <coughs> and if I can help, let me know. I, I just don't want to think I, I understand what you're saying and I understand what your mission is. Um, basically, you're trying to get these people off your back. And, I, and I, I don't have any difficulty understanding that. But I don't want them to be able to expand this. It's very, 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 very limited scope. Um, how, and you have to think of it in terms of the way I do, how, how does this really affect the health and welfare of the community? I think we're, yeah, I don't even want to go down that road. I think at this point we just, it's gone to the state level. Yeah. They're banging on the state door. The state's now come banging on our door. P public yes. health public health can be defined as one person. Public health, in my opinion, by the state has been defined as one person. That's why you do inspections of just single do the inspection. Health. Just do the inspection. Give each one of them a, um, a copy of the inspection report and just step away from it. And yeah. if the state comes calling us again, we'll have a copy of it. I, that's, I, that's, that's, should, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, that should satisfy and is there, if, that, if that's what she wants, that's right. what she'll get. It's yeah. out of our hands. Um, I, I, I would just do that. A whole lot of de parts of that definition. Part of which is the number of people that are at risk. If it's just one person, so my directions are that it should, if it's confined to a single household, stay away from it. If it's a neighborhood, then get involved. Um, they even talk about the characteristic of the people involved. It's in some infants or older adults that are at risk then get involved, otherwise don't. Um, the characteristic of the, of, the, uh, of the potential harm. A bag of garbage that smells is not a hazard. A failed septic system on a school playground is. Um, are there private remedies? If somebody's got uh, uh, um, wind blowing through around the window in their trailer, Maybe they should invest their United cents in some styrofoam and have you put it in for them. And I think those, you know, those guidelines are going to help you on 99% of the cases, but you're always going to get that 1% where, you know, at this point has kind of gone up. So. But anyway. So just was, follow up with us on the 28th and uh, just let us know that you've conducted the <coughs> investigation. Each party has a copy of it, and that. Why don't you just set that stuff aside for me, and I'll come down and pick it up tomorrow morning. I can do that. Okay. I'll burn it off right. Well, I appreciate you your time tonight, Neil. It's been a delight. Just keep right on this side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying your work as much as I enjoy it. <laughs> Mary, what are you making? This is Nancy. Um, I'm 
who was born in Sydney, and I couldn't take my eyes off that flag which I put there. And I didn't need another one. I don't know why that has. It must have been sitting in a sock. It shouldn't have just covered the way it is. What's the hand? What's all? I don't think it goes anywhere other than yeah, it sits there, unless it's just being moved around. No, it's a good flag. And yeah. Some light from the window or something, maybe. The game with the pole and the base with the sand and all that stuff. So sometimes you can do Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right, we have a couple of. Uh, <coughs> We had two meeting minutes there from the 10th and the 17th of December. I move we accept the minutes from 12th, 10th, and 12th, 17th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. Just waiting. What? Nothing. We're just what? getting we're getting through the select board I was, members. No, I was reading the statute, meeting. so it's kind of like <clears throat> town manager's report. Okay, I can't see. Too thick. All right. Let me see if there's any highlights of anything that needs to be discussed. Um, skate park. So we submitted the Land and Water Conservation Fund grant application. Um, we will be, we being myself and the rec committee will be going up Friday. Um, I think actually, I think it's down at White River Junction, but wherever it's at. Um, there is a, uh, it's an opportunity for people who have submitted applications to come and talk to the board that makes the choice for the applications to kind of answer questions and go over what the, what the project entails. So we'll be going down there on Friday to, to talk about our, our skate park project. <coughs> Hopefully that will help with the application and we, we hope we get it. If not, we'll have to, we'll have to figure something else out. Um, the parking permit, uh, I did receive all the, the decals and we got the signage for the parking lot. Uh, the, the boys are trying to figure out how to, how to put signs up in frozen ground, but they're gonna come up with some sort of a temporary deal uh, because the, the ordinance actually goes into effect on the 22nd. So, my plan is to this week um, go down Main Street again and just get with everybody and give everybody the application and, and let everyone know that this is this is starting. Um, you know, we're going to start kind of slow. We're not going to hammer on people right away as far as telling them, but eventually that will that will be the case. Um, so yeah, you should see some signs being put up there hopefully in the next few days, and um, we'll try to get everybody to get their application in for their permits and. See how this works. I think it'll work well. I really do. Um, well, our master plan, we talked about it earlier, is still ongoing. I think we're really close. Submitted the, my final comments and uh, last week. So I think within the next two, three months, I would hope that we'll hear something back from them. Um, we were already at 90%, so we, we can't be too far off. Um, Snow plowing, I don't know if you've heard anything good, bad, and different. I have heard mostly good about the plowing. Um, we are using a lot of salt, like we always do, because of the ice storms and all that, but I've heard really good. Um, Main Street, I think the guys are doing a good job of getting down there and getting cleared out in a timely manner. I think um, the new position that we have coming that, that's in is really, is really working out well. It's kind of a float and a, and a fallback when we need that person. And, um, so, I mean, if you've heard anything otherwise, let me know. We'll, we'll address it. But. I've heard a lot of good things, and I know the complaints at the hardware store are way down. So are they? Right here. Well, there yeah. you go. All right. Because it used to always be, he'd say that you know, it, a lot of the gatherers would come in there and complain about different issues. And right. He, said he hasn't had many. Of them. Well, you know, this position that <laughs> that you guys approved um, is Seems working the way I thought it was going to work. Yeah. I, I'm glad. I'm really happy with the way it's actually functioning. I think it's working out really well. You know, it's the first year, and there's going to be little tweaks to it, I think, here and there. But it's it's really, in my opinion, it's really serving the purpose that I wanted it to serve. Uh, we had times when we had the one ton down, and it didn't. It, it's it, it wasn't great, but it didn't completely kill us. We had another piece of equipment we could take up, and we could sort of do the job. So, um, any I, feedback, I, I like, Lindley, from the yeah? Have you heard anything I, I contrary? Okay. Um, and even. Uh, 
not, not just Main Street positive, but um, in the school they were they were saying that communication has been better this year. Good. And, um, Good. That's been really helpful. Yeah, I mean it's so, been a kind yeah, of an icy, kind of an icy year, I think, as opposed to snow, well, and it's been January is the ice month, so right. Mm -hmm. Right. So good. But if you hear if you hear anything, you know, negative, definitely. The, the, you know, we want to hear both, of course, but yeah. the negative helps. So if there's any complaints or anything you hear, let me know. And, and one thing I did want to ask, and this is maybe something to pose to Morgan, um, is we had originally sort of talked about, you know, park on the uphill side the night of the storm. Once it clears that, moved down, and it seemed like this last storm, everybody was kind of parked on both sides and he had cleared this side so most people moved just down to this end of the parking lot for the for the next night after the storm except some people didn't which probably messed up morgan's plowing ability and just if there's a better if there's a system that w either while you're going around doing parking permits or that would just be better i think communicating it people will yeah. adjust and do right. whatever we ask of them but I think right now people aren't sure what to do. And that was part of the idea of walking around and kind of talking to people. We, you know, we originally talked about the light and all that. And the more I thought about that, the more I thought that the logistics of that just weren't going to work. With The thought was that once he plowed the bottom, he turned a light on, people would have like two hours, three hours to come out and move. But people, people work all different times of day. Things happen, you know. So uh, I think, I agree. I think it's something that's going to be more of a word of mouth that people are just going to see. I mean, they, they know what we're trying to get and, done and here. I'm happy to help spread that word sure. if I know sure. what it is. I just don't want to be saying, park on the uphill side when actually we're just going to do one half of the No, the, the intent is to kind of, a, yeah, the idea is to do it all, of course. And I just didn't want to have like a real official system in place because then there are violations and stuff like that. I don't want to get into that because you, know, you just don't want to do that if you don't have to. So yes, that's the intent at the end of the day is that people, and we will, we will voice that to people that this is what we'd really like to see done is that during the day you move down to the bottom or you go to work or whatever and, and then we can get in there and do it wherever we can. But that's not the, that's not the, <coughs> officially that, that's not really the intent. It's more to get the, the bottom done and the middle opened up so that we can get traffic moving around. And if people choose to, to move, that's fine. I just didn't want to mandate that they had to move. Because then it could, could cause yeah, there's, there's also folks there that leave their vehicles there and, and go elsewhere for the day. So at least yeah. they're, not going, they're not going to be moving their vehicle during the day. Right. They stay wherever they leave. It. Again, it's a logistics thing. I just, I don't, like for that, for, for that exact reason, if somebody can show up at like five and park there, well, if I say you have to be moved, how do I know that, you know, it just doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't work. But I think it will work once we get the people that are there every night. They, we all know, we're gonna figure out who they are. And, and I think, don't think that they would be intentionally trying to create barriers for us. Right. So I think they're going to be pretty good about this. Right. We'll see how it plays out. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so if you hear anything, though, let me know, because you know, all the feedback is good. Um, kind of the last thing on here, I guess, is I'm working on, uh, so 459 Sugar Hill Road is a property uh, that we bought at tax sale like three years ago. And I don't know why, but I wasn't here, so whatever. Um, and the current tenant, if you will, uh, I'm trying to get him to leave. Um, so I'm kind of working on that process. We've had to do start some eviction proceedings. Uh, I think it's going to work without going to the, to the term on that. I think he's going to get out on his own. Um, but just something to, to be aware of that once that person has left, I'm going to put this, I would like to put this property up for sale. Um, and there is a small process that we have to go through, public process we have to go through for that. But uh, my, my intention here is to once he's out of the house, we'll, we'll put her up for sale and just do it either, you know, I'm not going to use a real estate agent because I already know of two people that are interested in it. Um, and it's not like we're asking for a lot of money. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but, you know, if we recoup what we, what we spend on this, you know, we're not paying a real estate agent, then we could keep the price pretty low because we want to get rid of it. So uh, just be aware, I will be bringing it back to you here to, in the near future. Um, either some terms for a, a, a contract or at least what I would like to do so we can set a, a, uh, a sale price on that property. Yep. Yeah. Uh, other than that, we're just, uh, we're, we're keeping on, keeping on, I guess. For any questions, comments? We lost a truck today. We lost a couple trucks. Yes. We have had issues with trucks since 
the day I started. Uh, we've got a one ton that's got, the one ton has something else wrong with it. It's down at the mechanics. There's a, some sort of like a master cylinder for your brakes, but this actually does the steering and the brakes and this other stuff, gone. Uh, one of the other trucks had, and I'm talking over my head because I don't understand all this stuff, but something with the steering on it is messed up. So we're down, we're down. But it'll be back up whenever the snow hits again. So that, that's kind of the way the guys operate up there. It's, you know, it's, it's work and then work on the equipment. And they work and work on the equipment, and that's that keeps them busy all the time because this equipment's just and you know I don't they're not rough on the equipment I just don't know I don't know what to some say. of those pieces are fairly new yeah you know yeah. I mean we've, we've well like the one at Doug's truck we call it Doug's truck the newest truck mm -hmm. this is something to do with like the DEF that diesel exhaust thing yeah. Yeah. that kills us because just what it does to the computer system what it, but this it, is not the first time it's, it's not the first time so, what something's wrong there. It's some, and again, a lot of times it's that DEF. What it does is it puts the truck into what I'll call it, like idle mode. It won't let you rev it up. It's just yeah. putt, putt, putt down the, down the road. So We get issues with that often at work with our trucks too. Do you? That DEF stuff? Yeah. Yeah. But that's really, it's kind of the way they, they function though. You know, we have to, there's always little damage that's done to the equipment. And they, when they're not plowing the roads this time of year, they're typically fixing the equipment. Just be glad that they can do it. We have some mechanically inclined guys up there that can do it. It saves us a lot of money not sitting. That we haven't had out. to uh, subcontract out any work yet. None. So that's good. Because remember last year we had. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the mechanic work that would have been sent out in the past has been done in house. Yeah. Good. You know, we've got two or three well, guys. That, that, well, Doug's truck left on a record today. It did because nothing they could do about that. And I'm hoping that's a warranty issue because yeah. it's still under warranty. So, mm -hmm. but a lot of the other things that they have, the little things that break here and there, that are they're fixing all that in-house as, as they can. So, yeah, it's just a never-ending battle. It really is. Uh, constable report. I didn't really see anything that stuck out other than... I know we had talked about before, maybe a better way of showing if he actually tickets somebody or not. Yeah, there's going to be um, another report. Because I see that there was one that was pulled over, but you don't know if they ended up ticketing the person that yeah we're, we're working on a separate report that will be okay. if tickets were this software is kind of it's, it's fairly new it was actually designed by somebody that he knows and so what's nice about it is, is when we have something that we want to change the yeah. guy's pretty good about adding that piece to it yeah so we're working on sort of a, a, a one page spreadsheet kind of thing that shows what happened or if a ticket was written I mean I see him out and about quite a bit um, I mean, I know people don't tend to drive as fast during the winter as they do in the summer, so probably more tickets in the summer than there is in the winter, but. but he's told me if the, if the, what he has told me that the way he does the, the report right now, I think he said is if the license plate is shown, it was a ticket. I think that's what he told me. Oh, okay. So, all right. But he, we're still working on an, another type of report that's gonna be a little cleaner to read. Okay. Pick up any, any trainings in there, Paul? Any what? Any trainings? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> there was um, there was the recreation committee meeting minutes that were in there. You guys had a chance to look through that. <coughs> it seemed like the big part was the um, some of the skateboard talk as well as some uh, you know, starting the process of. Sign ups for pool and stuff for next year. Starting the, yeah, she wants to start the sign ups early, uh, which I, I don't see why there was a limit anyway. Why did we say you have to wait till April to do it? If you want to do it, you can do it. You can do it any time of the year. Yeah. yeah. Once yeah. January 1st comes, look right. at hunting license, right? Yeah. Exactly. And she will be, uh, she'll have a table at, at town meeting too. Yeah. Okay. Kind of go over the new fight, the new things that are going to be happening out at the pool this year. She's got a whole new list of family fun nights. Good. Is there anything going on with the joint board? I haven't seen any minutes in the uh, mm -hmm. We haven't had a meeting for, uh, for uh, five, six weeks now. Where, where are we at in regards to the <coughs> facility going on its own? I mean, that yeah, kind of seemed like it's kind of just we're trying stalled to get, at this we're point. We're trying to get somebody to uh, create a business plan for us and a feasibility study. But okay. We, we 
have got to that point yet. You yeah, talked but, about two rivers, I thought, right? Yeah. That they had gotten a quote from two rivers to help them with the business plan? Right, but they never showed up to our meeting and they, we had to give them up front money to have a meeting start looking at it. Hmm. So, Is there a time frame set on that, on the next six months or a year? Or? Seems to be working pretty good the way it is, where we always have right now. <laughs> 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 so you'll let us know, maybe bring it up at the next meeting. Yeah, we got to it up a little bit. Last week. We didn't have one this last week. Okay. So it's been a spell since we've had one. Okay. So I just kind of came to my attention, but any other communications of business before the board tonight? I think the only thing I had is um, I have a personal commitment for the 28th, which is our next meeting. Um, and at best, I would be here like late. So rather than go through communications through email and somebody that wants to, to run the meeting on the 28th, uh, is there somebody that would like to be the chair for the night and run the meeting for the 28th? Um, draw straws, you want to do that way? <laughs> no pressure, Paul. They're always looking at I mean, it seems, like, it seems like a majority of majority of the important things that are done tonight with the budget and stuff, so I would foresee it being a difficult meeting. Yeah, it's no biggie, Paul. We'll just do all the raises and stuff next week. Oh, we'll just like board raises? <laughs> yeah, for everyone. So, yeah. Okay, so Paul will stay in the moment. Good. All right, I will entertain anything Anything else? Any other? I've got our second one review letter. Yeah. I don't know if you got a chance. I have I I got your email. I haven't had a chance to look at it, but I had I had a combination of issues going on computer wise over the last week. I had um, my work computer died. So then I had to retype it on my personal computer. And um, I it downloaded an update automatically for me. Well, the new update disabled my mouse pad. So I had no way of I had no way of doing anything on my mouse pad, so I had to actually go out and buy a wireless mouse to be able to go click on a box to to enable the mouse pad. So I was like, at that point, I'm almost just going to handwrite it and give it to you guys. Do but, you need to do my review? So, isn't it time for that? We have. I think it is. I, um, usually we do it January, February. So. We, we should start at that, yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah, because remember it was June and I went six months and then it was a year after that. So We've been doing it up January and February, so yeah. after the, the year. Okay. And then usually we do the um, the goal setting right after town meeting day. So I, I would say as long as we do it between now and town meeting day is the end of the year review, that would be. We. When would you like to? Oh, I don't know, I'll think about it. But after town meeting day, so, do you remember how, okay, never mind, never mind. I answered my own question, never mind. I'm sorry, Doug. So maybe, do, do we want to pick the, um, maybe like the first board meeting in February to do, to go, to start going through the process of your, sure. your interview with you? So if maybe, if you have your self-evaluation done by whatever that first mm -hmm. board meeting is in, in uh, February, we can start that process. Okay. That way we'll be able to finish your review the second board meeting in February, which will be right before. Do we have we have a form that we use? To yes. Yeah, I have it. I have the last one that we did. I'll yeah. just. So we'll, get, so we'll get that. And usually, it's good. You know, Greg will fill out his yeah. his information, send it to us, and then and then we can talk about it and put our information in. There. So. Okay. That's all I've got. Anything else? No. Can you send me the the select board? Letter um, summary there with the corrections on it. Can you email that? To me? I think you were on the email. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, it's on the same string. From yeah, just get, I have to get those. Oh, okay. I have to get those to Kelly by the end of the week. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to change the date. The idea. <coughs> Did I have a date on there? You said it was a report for 2019. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. Sir. Yes. The um, the only thing is I I started off with. I just I started off with a piece of paper listing everything that we've got over for the year. Mm -hmm. 
Kelly wanted to try and keep it to one page. Um, the other thing is what we wanted to do was get a picture of the select board members. So, so we'll have a page. So we'll have a written up page and a picture. Mm -hmm. um, so I, once I got it all together, and uh, it didn't conform to one page, so I had to. So I started just kind of taking off some of the low hanging fruit. Kept some yeah, of the upper ones. Anything. It was mostly just. Um, so as long as it all stays in one page, yeah. we'll be able to fit it in there. So that's where I was just trying to pick apart the, the higher end stuff. Um, yeah. Well, she's worse than I am. Yeah. Yeah. Big more math. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't. I haven't gone. It's not a final. I haven't done anything with the final version. So. Other than it just got written just literally Scary. today. Um, so after a couple of failed versions. So, so just get those back to me. I mean. Yeah, I didn't know how pressing it was to have yeah, it done by today, and I had a No, I gotta have it to her by Friday. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So I'll entertain a motion to enter. Is this, this, it? this is our picture happening. This is an action shot. Action. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Lisa, if you could somehow like get. Like Get really up, light. really up yeah, high. The balloon finally awesome. came down. <laughs> when did yeah, the balloon come down? This is gonna work, you guys. We got your drone, baby. There you go. All right, four. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay, we'll right. see what's going on. It's pretty dark. dark. <laughs> I move we go into executive session on uh, legal matters. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We'll also be uh, bringing Mary Floyd in with us as well. So, yeah. And we may be making, maybe making a. Yeah. I know you we can get you there. You want me to do it? Okay, thank you. Okay. Perfect.